So Wade, when we think about storytelling, which is not a term that we would normally associate in a business context, how did you get involved in, in this area? So my background has been in uh, improvised comedy. So walking out on stage for the last 20 years, not knowing what you can do or say next, and you learn what makes an effective story, what what, what uh, keeps people wanting more and, 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 and how to really connect with people. It's the kind of actor's job to recreate the human experience, and that's what uh, I do on stage. Um, yeah. So is this something that you took as an interest and then suddenly thought hang on there might be a business opportunity in there as well yes so yeah so i, had, I was i was doing um i originally i was doing corporate entertainment with my improv bandits and people came up and started saying oh we love the show and but how do we get our people to work together and communicate and be creative like you guys and uh so i saw a business opportunity there and started developing um uh, some training experiential training programs using improv is it's a wonderful vehicle for adults to learn through the having learning through play and having fun mm. uh, and then I had uh, I partnered up with uh, Steve Hill and uh, we started doing storytelling inside organizations and then that business then morphed into uh, another business mind warriors which we're doing jolt together and I've kind of picked up the storytelling by myself because of uh, my expertise in it of learning narrative and teaching narrative uh, but then I've merged, uh, taken it away from the stage and put it into a business context. So what I do is not, uh, I don't teach people how to be improv actors in, in organisations. I teach them how to become um, uh, the, the principles of storytelling, organisational storytelling. And, and this has been known uh, over the years under different guises. Uh, and storytelling really wouldn't have been the way you described it 10 years ago. And yet it's kind of come into vogue. Well, why do you think that the sudden interest in storytelling? I think uh, in the past, storytelling has been, uh, well, I know uh, working with a, a Vodafone 10 years ago, uh, we couldn't call it storytelling. They said it has to be called, I think the term was communicating with impact. So, because um, it was just too airy fairy. Uh, but now I think with some more, with the, the advances in science and neuroscience, particularly, so understanding how the brain works uh, and so forth, and just the evolution of uh, us as a species and, and, and biz the evolution of business, people realize and can see that storytelling makes sense. Organizational storytelling makes sense. Uh, and that it's, the, it's a very powerful way of connecting with people. So just before we talk a bit about that, what is some of the neuroscience telling you about why this really does engage people? Well, it showed, the neuroscience shows us that, that there is no uh, a split between the, uh, the way we think and the way we, that we feel, and that we're actually more rationalizing being. So we'll make emotional decisions and then rationalize it after the fact, rather than thinking that we're actually rational and logical beings. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're looking to connect with people, uh, you need to be talking to the emotions. And storytelling does that. And so facts and figures are great. Uh, you don't throw them out the window. Uh, but you need to start wrapping them up uh, in a story so that people become so it becomes more memorable with it as well. We, we remember things when they're in a story rather than just a list of you've seen the PowerPoint slides of facts and figures or, mm. or whether it's a new vision or the values or a strategy. Mm. Uh, it quickly falls out of memory. So how can you, or can you actually teach people this, or, or 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 are people distinguished by whether or not they're natural storytellers or not? Well, we've all grown up with stories. Uh, everyone's been a child, so they've all had stories read to them. Uh, it's really how our brain uh, makes sense of the world is through narrative. We don't do random very well. Uh, we have a part of our brain that is always looking for meaning, and that's what storytelling uh, conveys. So it's, um, it's it's just a it's a powerful way of just communicating your message. So when you're when you're teaching people this, what are you teaching them? What what's the method that that you're that you're suggesting people adopt? Yeah. So I, I use um, a, a very simple methodology. That's I think why that's why I'm popular. I think because it's simple and effective for people. Uh, there's there's a lot of uh, theory around there in storytelling, but my interest is always around making it practical. And I, I have a very simple methodology that's that's been tried and uh, tried and tested on on stage um, for twenty years. Uh, which is all around uh, making sure that someone or something undergoes change. That's pretty much the number one rule uh, with storytelling. And therefore, what, what sort of headspace do people have to be in to, 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 to take this on? Uh, well, I, I, the headspace, uh, storytelling makes sense for people intuitively. Um, we all have the ability to be a, a storyteller, but that doesn't mean uh, natural talent is enough mm. you know there's plenty of people run fast they're not all running at the olympics you know you have to work at it work at it so there is that uh, the crafting and the skill uh, set to work on uh, but we can all we can all do it and it's just really um, and I guess I help people move away from being a presenter of information to become a storyteller mm. so just the headspace that to to be human is to be a storyteller uh, and that uh, you're going to get much more effective uh, results if you become a storyteller rather than just a presenter.
How challenging do you find it is to get your average CEO or, or person in a senior role to suddenly think of themselves as a storyteller? Well, one, it's quite simple, actually. Um, once you redefine what storytelling is, uh, you help them, because some people do think storytelling is once upon a time, uh, you know, fairy tales or whatever it may be. Uh, and I kind of help people realize, you know, show people that it's not about that or not just limited to that. And as soon as, as, soon as you uh, start talking to them and, and examples as soon as you say let me tell you an example you're about to hear a story mm. uh, it just makes real sense for them when you look around the world the, the research is is quite conclusive on this this is not something that's uh, you know a, a fairly loose bit of thinking that suddenly become into vogue effectively yeah there's a lot, lot of science behind it and um, I also find um, you usually find a lot of the uh, HR people are very uh, are amazed at how you know, I can get uh, you know engineers or, or very left brain process mm. uh, people engaged in storytelling and that's simply because I, I frame the why uh, storytelling and why organisational storytelling in particular is important uh, in their day to day lives. So, mm. it's 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 not something that um, an, another skill that leaders have to learn. It's actually the way they do everything that they do, is through storytelling. It's interesting because there's debate also around creativity in a similar vein, isn't it? That that we're born creative uh, and then we kind of grow out of it. And and do you think the same applies with with our attitude to to the way we communicate as well? Yeah, very much so. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Um, uh, it's storytelling and creativity. Obviously, the work that I do and coming from the world of improvisation, uh, they're, they're joined at the hip. They're not two things separate. To be when you're a storyteller, you're having to be creative, and when you're being creative, often you'll find storytelling lies at the heart of that as well. Mm. Who are the people that respond best to, to this? Do you find is there a, is there a type of person, or, or or can it apply to just about anybody? Uh, just for anybody. I mean, to be human is to be a storyteller. So, uh, it, but obviously. Um, people will vary in levels of engagement with it and I think the thing I've learned over the last decade plus is is not not to assume people who you think are going to be very resistant to it end up being your bigger supporters uh, of it as well and and really running with it so I've worked on many organizations many different levels of an organization um, usually around leadership because the stories that I focus on getting leaders to tell but anyone and everyone can can embrace this and and do well with it You've worked with a, right, a wide range of clients, even including the IRD. Mm, yes, yes, and and and, the, and they've been fantastic in embracing the role of storytelling, mm-hmm. and, um, and organisations around you know new vision and new values rollout, um, uh, dealing with change uh, through the stories. Mm-hmm. So yeah, a lot of organisations. What do you find uh, is the most uh, noticeable outcome when, once this is adopted? Well, using the IRD as an example, you could see in some of the sessions there, uh, and they did it from uh, some of the senior people, or, or in fact, people from all across the organisation, and you just people become more engaged. Because the types of stories around, if you're looking at what's the purpose of the organisation, something like the IRD go from uh, a self-image of, oh, we're the dreaded uh, tax man, uh, into actually we're responsible for the economic well-being of a nation. Mm-hmm. So it's a very different story. And, and as, as I always point out to people, the most important story uh, you tell is the one that you tell yourself every day in your head. So just getting people to reframe uh, and, and look through a different lens of the story that they're telling themselves about who they work for, uh, what's the purpose of the organisation so that they feel engaged to it. How quickly can you achieve this sort of transformation? Is this like a, a one-day course, and you can be a you can be a gifted storyteller yeah, by the end? I'm, I'm a magician. Uh, I bring my wand to every session, and uh, yeah. So so I, it will vary. It will be. Um, uh, it can be if you're looking at things like you know one to two hours if you're just looking at an awareness exercise i think that we're, what gives me a lot of satisfaction is getting in there and actually helping people craft their stories uh take them through the science side of things uh and making it kind of really uh, a skill that they can develop so yeah two days is, is great you can after two days you can walk away with a great appreciation of what storytelling is mm-hmm. uh, and even some stories that you can put to immediate use i'm very uh tool orientated tool focused i want people to walk out with stuff that they can use straight away mm-hmm. How how much do you find the improv give, gives you a, a decided advantage in all of this? Well, that's where the theory that, that, that's where that's the, the theory comes to life through the improv. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a wonderful I said before. It's a wonderful tool for self creation, self expression, self discovery, uh, and it's just it just um, I guess one of the big things is it creates a sense of play. Mm-hmm. So the barriers between people drop. And, and using humour is the number one way to connect with people. So mm. it's a very powerful um, art form and, and uh, creates that whole experiential learning uh, experience for people. 
What about ages? Is it easier for young people to adopt this, you know, and then and then take it into into adult life, or, or can or can those in, in their you know late career equally pick up on it as successfully? I think I think uh, the older you are, uh, often you know the more set in the ways you can be, but also the more stories that you'll have uh, to share, and 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 your whole life is is a database of stories. So it's it's I don't think it's an either or. I think it's a both and. Um, Young people can use it and and uh, and, and tell stories, uh, and be engaged in the work that they do. And and the older people can can lead by example through the stories that they tell. Mm. And and as a communication tool, it, you must find it, it it becomes quite liberating for people once they actually feel that they've got a, a toolkit that they can use. Yeah, and it's a, and it's a total reframe for people to be a storyteller. It makes a lot more intuitive sense than to be a presenter. Everyone's, uh, well, it's not everyone's uh, favourite to stand at the front of the room and, and and the principles of storytelling are relevant whether it's one to one in a coaching situation as a leader or manager, mm. or one to many if you're you know a new a new uh, strategy rollout or whatever it may be, mm. uh, and it just makes people feel more comfortable. Um, when they think of it through the frame of storytelling mm. rather than all this information that they've got to get through. And, and, and that's kind of the power of storytelling. It just cuts straight to the meaning mm. of it. You can get rid of a lot of the, you know, we're an information overload uh, in this day and age. So it just really cuts to the heart of, of uh, the message that you want to communicate. Obviously, you mentioned this is a, a couple of days course, but, but if you're giving people some immediate ideas to take away, what do you suggest people do to, to just begin to embrace some of, some of the broader concepts of what it is you're, you're proposing. So it, the thing is to know what kind of story that you're uh, doing. I, I talk about the, the five stories, uh, the future stories, which might be the vision of an organization uh, or a strategy story. Um, then you've got your identity story, so you reveal yourself through the stories uh, that you that you share. Um, I use the lovely line that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Mm. So the way that you reveal yourself through your stories. Uh, then you've got your values. Um, you know, there's plenty of organisations who have values that live on a poster on the wall and so forth and aren't being lived and breathed in the organisation. And then the kind of the, the stories that engage the hearts and minds as well. So uh, the number one thing is to know what story. Um, and what is your purpose for communicating to these people? Is it a team meeting? Is it to inspire? Is it to influence? Is it to coach? Is it to share some knowledge uh, as well? So know what the what the point of your story is, and then there's always, as I said before, there's always got to be someone or something that's going to undergo change. As otherwise, why are you talking to them? Does this need to be, um, you know, led from the top by a chief executive, or can, or can it also be bottom up? Uh, usually, to be a storytelling organisation, to make that shift, it's got to be led from the top. Mm. Uh, if, if you're asking uh, people, uh, mid-management or, or, or lower, um, you know, what is the purpose of the organisation, they're always going to look up the food chain to mm. see uh, what what the purpose is. So really, you need to have the, the CEO or managing director very, very clear on what the purpose is mm. and what is the story. And then ideally, it would get personalised by the exec team and then the senior leaders and so forth. They would personalise that story so it's relevant to, to their business unit uh, rather than there's no one story fits all. I think that's really important mm. to understand as well. Do organisations need to get a certain set of criteria lined up, though, before you can you can adopt this? Yeah, well, they, they, they need to be clear on what their vision is, uh, what their, their reason for being, their purpose is. They need to know what the values are and the, and the behaviours that they're looking for uh, underneath that. Mm. And, and then when it comes to communicating those things, that's where the role of storytelling uh, really comes to the fore. Mm. So how do you characterise the, the current state of communication generally across the landscape when you look at corporates and, and businesses that are trying to communicate every day? How, how do you characterise it? Oh, well, the thing that I see uh, that is largely missing uh, is that uh, not enough leaders are telling people the purpose of the organisation. If we think as, as a basic human need, if you look at uh, this may come as a shock for you, Andrew, but we're all going to die, uh, you and I included. Yeah. Um, and if, we look, if we're lucky enough to, to, to live a, a long, full life, uh, we want to look back and go, did my life have meaning? Did it have purpose? Mm -hmm. And organisations uh, give that to people. They offer the opportunity. It's like the modern day tribes. You belong, get to belong to something bigger than yourself. And, 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 and this is the point. If, if the leaders are telling that story, you don't have to worry about bribing people with tickets to the rugby or, or the opera or the cricket or whatever it may be to get them to engage because people will willingly give their time and energy 
uh, if they if they feel that they are uh, having their needs met and, and, and are living a life of purpose. So really that's the, the number one thing uh, I think is missing in organizations today. And this is interesting because, you know, traditionally we've thought about meaning and purpose being derived outside of the workspace, but increasingly the workspace is considered part of the the, the, the whole person space, isn't it? I, I think this is the whole uh, problem that we have in, with Western thought in that we like to, uh, deductive thinking, we like to break things down into boxes. We uh, Work is over here and life is over here, as if you could ever separate work from life. And, mm-hmm. and even the, the, the term work-life balance for me is a total misnomer. Mm-hmm. Uh, balance suggests that uh, there's a sense of evenness around these things and there's no way because most of us spend more time at work than we do it at home with you know during the week at least without then our loved ones at, at home so it occupies a lot of our thinking at oh, the same time yeah. even when we're not at work i'm i'm pretty sure i'm not the only person who takes some work home with them yeah. on the weekend at least in their mind so uh yeah absolutely so this whole idea of uh work-life balance and and, and separating those things is, is an issue um so i think if, if yeah if we connect to that purpose um, again, to belong to something bigger than ourselves, and that's incredibly powerful. And, and not enough organisations uh, have tapped into that or realised that. Uh, and I guess that's part of uh, my mission with mm-hmm. the storytelling. Who are the exemplars of this that you that you can point to? Well, in, in New Zealand, I love Bob Harvey. So Bob Harvey is a, is a fantastic storyteller. Uh, and I, I saw him do a presentation, uh, and he, you know, he was using you know fifty slides in his in his slideshow, and very few words were on the slides. It was you know every picture tells a story, mm-hmm. and he would put up a slide and he would speak to that. Uh, and so he was, but it, but uh, he speaks from the heart, mm-hmm. and and uh, so I thought uh, if I think of a, an excellent storyteller, uh, Sir Bob Harvey's right right up there, um, and he's done an amazing job right from you know from his time out west as the the mayor at Waitakere, and what he's doing now with Waterfront Auckland is uh, is, a, is an amazing story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and within the corporate space and and globally, are there other people that kind of stand out for you that you think really embrace this type of thing? Well, we look at if you look at um, uh, fantastic. Or and, and you don't have to be, and this is one of the point I'm making, is you don't have to be the uh, the Martin Luther Kings, mm. the, the Winston Churchills. Barack Obama. Barack Obama, exactly. You don't have to be uh, that kind of uh, a charismatic uh, leader to be a good storyteller. I think a lot of the charisma comes from the things that these people have done. Mm. Uh, and and um, I worked with a um, I worked with a managing director who um, uh, was very uh, was loved by his people, but was a, a terrible uh, public speaker. You know, he'd close himself right off and would look at his shoes uh, to the point where they put a little smiley face on his shoes and with the words "look up," you know, <laughs> to, to remind him to look up. But he was so. But he, he had a very high trust and, and integrity was a very core value, and, and people loved him. His people loved him. So, um, but globally, yeah, people like Barack Obama, you know, very, very uh, impressive orators. Um, yeah, but uh, I think that that's a, a nice to have, not necessarily uh, you must be uh, at that scale to be an effective storyteller. So really, it's about the story. It's about being able to tell the story and and not necessarily about the way the way that you tell the story. Yeah, I mean, it would be, of course, it would be lovely to be everyone to be like a, a Barack yeah. Obama, but uh, I think it is. It, it, and the key thing with, and again, depending, you know, whether it's you're telling the story that reveals you or, or a vision, it has to be authentic. Mm. It has to be authentic. And that comes back to why one story will not fit all. You need to have... Um, uh, it needs to be personal. You need to personalise the story so it comes from your heart. Because mm. uh, we, we're quite good at picking up uh, when things are not authentic, mm. when, you, when, you're, when you're looking at somebody uh, speaking and so forth. And we'll take their body language over what they're saying every time. Mm. If it's incongruent, it's just like, oh, that didn't sound, I don't trust them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And and for you, this has turned into a into a pretty successful business. Yes, yeah, it's been and and it's and it's fantastic. I said the, you know, some of the work with people when you see them um, realize, you know, connect through storytelling of what they're doing on a day to day business. I mean, a very simple uh, story to illustrate that point mm-hmm. is about the three bricklayers. A well known story where the three bricklayers laying bricks, and the first person comes up and what are you doing? I'm, I'm laying bricks. Second person, I'm building a wall. The third bricklayer says, I'm building a cathedral. Mm-hmm. And I use that story just to to let leaders know that. Um, most of the time, people who go to work are focusing on the day-to-day tasks of, what, of their job, mm-hmm. and that's laying bricks. Very few of them are thinking about what they do uh, in the wider scale of things. So I remember working with uh, uh, Sea Lord with, on storytelling, and there are people within the organisation who, who uh, stand, stand the, the conveyor belts cutting fish for eight hours a day, 
uh, an incredibly monotonous job as far as as far as that goes. But these people are highly engaged because they're connected to the fact that what they do for those eight hours is linked to the customer uh, or the fish that's on their plate. Mm-hmm. And, and because they've, they've done a very good job with the storytelling side of things, they have a high level of engagement. Mm-hmm. And for yourself, this must create a lot of meaning for you personally, being able to, uh, you know, I guess make a difference in the world. Yeah, yes, yeah, so all the warm fuzzies are right there with this work. So, and and I and I and I love that um, being able to use improv away from the stage, yeah. and and it's been a wonderful gift uh, for me for the last twenty years and how it's impacted my life. So it's nice to be able to share that and see people uh, can do that, whether it's through through the storytelling or through the creativity or whatever it may be, to to get more meaning in what they do.